May I have a word? There's no word to be had. The people. The people. The people. The people. The people. The people. There are 70 million people watching. These pictures are going around the world. We must make a massive demonstration. You've seen people travel across the country to attend tomorrow's march, mostly white. I heard about the attack of innocent people. I couldn't just stand by. Looks like an army out there. But congratulations on your role in Selma. Uh, can I ask you about the, the calling you felt mm. about playing Dr. King over the years? What exactly do you mean by that? Um, well, um, it, 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 exactly that in a sense. I read the script in 2007 for the first time, two months after having moved to LA to pursue a, a Hollywood career. And uh, having read it, I felt God tell me that I was going to play this role in this film. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian like Dr. King was, and uh, you know, my faith plays a very big part in my life, in my choices. And I know that voice. It's the same voice that told me to marry my wife, gave me the names of my children. And um, it shocked me, is the truth of the matter. I've never thought uh, until that point that Dr. King was someone I should, could, or would play. Um, but like I say, you know, that, that deep spiritual knowing never left me. And for the seven years, as directors came and went, as um, you know, I did eventually get cast in 2010, and still we couldn't get the film off the ground to the point whereby I went from being rejected by the first director to actually advocating the director who actually did it to the point where we actually got the film made. You know, all along the way, it was, it was that knowing that this would happen that kept me going. He's got supporters. Detroit, New York, Los Angeles, inciting large-scale arrests and sympathy marches. I'm very aware of that, Mr. Hoover. What I do know is he's nonviolent. What I need to know right now, what's Martin Luther King about to do next? Mr. President, Dr. King is here. Dr. King, of course, is a, a man of huge stature, a historical icon, but he was just a man. Yes. It's a very nuanced performance from you how difficult it was to, to get all, all shades of the man, all kind of factors of, of the human frailties, in other words, of, of Dr. King in there? Uh, they were tricky uh, to, to, to get in there, as you say, but they were absolutely necessitous. I mean, if all we did was show you what you kind of already know about Dr. King, then all we'd be doing is making a good case for going to watch a documentary. Um, I think uh, for us to go to the cinema and see ourselves in Dr. King, because he was indeed a human being with weaknesses that we all share, Share, I think is really a powerful thing considering what he went on to do because I do believe that we have uh, that potential for greatness in all of us and like I say if we can see ourselves in him maybe that'll uh, that'll inspire us. 50 years after the events of, of Selma what about the younger generation black and white in America how aware are they do you think they are of, of, of what went on 50 years ago in Selma? shamefully unaware. Um, I've actually, you know, we have MLK Day in, in, in America and I've actually, I know of people who don't even know what MLK stands for, uh, what that acronym means, uh, let alone who he was, what he represents, and almost no one knows about Selma. Uh, you know, the, that episode, a lot of people know about the March on Washington because that's where he gave the famous speech. Uh, less people, but still, you know, quite a few know about Memphis and the fact that, that were, that's where he was assassinated. But Selma is a chapter that is, uh, is not really uh, well known at all, and yet it's the most successful moment within the civil rights movement. You know, that those campaigns took place uh, between January and March of 1965, and by August the law had changed, and people uh, were no longer being stopped or intimidated uh, from being able to register to vote. I'm from Ireland, so I have to ask you, are you aware of his impact on the civil rights movement in, in the North in the late 60s? 
Uh, I'm not actually, um, but I do, you know, I've heard the same thing of, of South Africa. Um, I've, I've heard this, I know the same thing of, of the United Kingdom, um, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure there are several pl places in the world where he, what he did, because what he did, the thing that's so powerful about Dr. King is that his philosophy, there was a universal truth, which is that love can ultimately overcome hate. And that's something that transcends color lines. It, it transcends borders. Uh, it transcends religion. Uh, and it certainly transcends race. And so, you, you know, that, that's why I'm so proud that we got this film made, because it's not an American story. It's a story about the human condition. And um, so, you know, it's amazing to hear that. It doesn't surprise me. Um, but, you know, that is absolutely why I was drawn to the story. David. Brilliant. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. What happens when a man stands up, says enough is enough? This revolution goes on and on.